Welcome to QGIS 101. My name is Andreas de Jong and in this video I'm going to show you how to georeference a scan map using fixed objects on the map which we can find on our satellite image. We're going to be working on the Salma Dam in Afghanistan which was completed in 2016 and what we'll do is we'll georeference the general layout plan over the top of the satellite image using the georeferencer tool which you can find in the raster menu. I'm going to be working with QGIS 3.10, but it might work in other versions as well. So let's get started. Here is the Salma Dam with the reservoir behind it. Uh, we're seeing it here thanks to the Esri satellite image, which uh, you can access online. And what I've done is I've already loaded the scan map. And let's zoom to it and have a look at it. You can see there's a little question mark here to the right which means that QGIS doesn't understand what are the coordinate systems of this scan map. And as a matter of fact, it has decided that our map is much bigger than the rest of the world. And if you look at this top left-hand corner here, and we go over it, you'll notice that the coordinates are 0, 0 in the top left-hand corner. You can see the coordinates are down here. If I move here, 0, 0. And if we move to the bottom right, then uh, we've got coordinates of about 2400 and minus 1690, something like that. If we look at our properties, we can see that those numbers are actually the width and height in pixels of our scan map. Okay, let's go back to the crypt sheet. We need to follow six steps when we reference in QGIS. First of all, and this is incredibly important, we need to understand the map coordinates. So ideally what we want to do when we dereference a map is to dereference it according to its coordinate system. And then later on we can project it to whatever coordinate system we want. Now I've had a look around this uh, map and I cannot see anywhere a description of the coordinate system. What we do have are some grid lines. Unfortunately I cannot read the numbers of these grids so basically we can't use the coordinate system of this map. What is interesting is that we have a little north symbol here, which seems to be parallel to our grid lines. So maybe this map is in, a, in a, some sort of a UTM coordinate system. So what we'll do is we'll go to our series of our uh, project and I'm gonna type UTM and the one we want is UTM zone 41 north uh, which is for this part of Western Afghanistan, we'll just say apply. So now um, if we zoom back to our layer, you can see that the coordinates are still in uh, digits, but now of course our Esri satellite image in the background, you can't see it. So let's just go back to our Salma Dam. I'm using a special bookmark here to find it. and. Um, uh, you'll see the coordinate systems here are now in UTM. The next step is to decide on grid or object georeferencing. Unfortunately, we cannot use grid georeferencing because we don't know the coordinates of the grid line, so we're going to have to use object georeferencing. Let's start the georeferencer. If we go to plugins, manage and install plugins, and we type in georef, you should see this one here, Georeferencer GDAL. And please make sure that it is switched on. It's a core plugin, but uh, sometimes it has not been activated. Now, if we go to raster, you'll find it here, Georeferencer at the bottom. We just click on it and it opens in a new window. Unfortunately, there's nothing in it yet. So next thing we need to do is to load our map. So. I'm going to open it like so, and uh, here is our map. Okay, um, before we add the ground control points, I'm just going to show you a bit around the georeferencer. Uh, if you look here, there are uh, a number of icons which help us to uh, do things. So first of all, there is the zoom one, so we can zoom in to any part of our um, image, we can zoom out 
we can uh, zoom to the previous magnification we can even zoom this is like the zoom extends and we can move it around using that little hand so um, very similar to the other uh, tools in QGIS another one which you can't see here is that I'm now going to zoom in and out just using the scroll bar on my mouse which is actually the easiest way to move around in this scanned map okay now what we want to do next is to add the ground control points there are three buttons here which we're going to use the most important one is the one with the yellow one so if you click on this we can zoom in on a particular location let's have a look maybe this bottom left hand corner of the building if I click on it I've just done the left click you'll see that now it wants to know what are the coordinates we don't know what the coordinates are we're going to take them from our satellite image so that building is this one here and it's not very clear but I think it's somewhere here I'm just going to click on that and you can see that the coordinates are now registered and I'll just say OK notice that down here in the GCP table we have our first row with source coordinates and destination coordinates so the source coordinates are in pixels and destination is in UTM okay so I've got my first point uh, I'll continue doing this for a while I'm going to put another point in this part of the building from map, map canvas and zoom in and maybe somewhere here say okay zoom out zoom into this corner that's not very clear maybe here uh, from map canvas zoom into there okay and maybe to this corner as well from map canvas click on it press ok and basically we're going to have to do this for as many points as we can I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've done this exercise before and um, uh, basically what we can do is we can load these ground control points uh, from a previous exercise and for that we need to uh, press this button here which says load GCP open and you can see that it has now replaced all the ones we've just done and down here these are all the ground control points that I've digitized previously if we look at our ground control points basically the ones I've chosen are always at the edges of buildings for example this one up here and I've tried to get some from the dam itself which is a bit difficult um, because basically you can only get the ends of it or, or where this spillway is for example there's some nice corners here the ends of the spillway as well and the next step if I just look at the crib sheet is to choose the transformation parameters now this is really important if we click on either this yellow symbol here or settings transformation settings we open it this is basically what controls how the georeferencing is carried out now there's a lot of different types or different options of transformation types and normally I start with polynomial 1 and I just say OK and you can see now that there are these little red lines which have appeared and basically they are our errors and there seems to be quite a lot of errors I mean these lines are some are shorter than others but uh, like up here you can see that that's quite quite a lot and also here on the right hand part of this table you can see the residual which is basically the error in numbers of pixels we can try other transformation types for example polynomial second order polynomial and we still have some errors but maybe they've reduced a bit and maybe even uh, third order polynomial uh, you see that the lines have decreased in size um, but when we transform it we actually get some funny results let's try it out so to transform it we click 
this uh, green arrow here. It has transformed correctly and let's just close it and have a look at the result. So this was a third order uh, transformation polynomial and you can see that although the control points are maybe in the right place, um, it really is not acceptable. Yeah, this, this is not good at all. So I'm going to remove it and start again. Let's go back to our raster georeferencer. Let's start it again and we'll load our control points. Okay. And what we'll do this time is we'll try something really simple, which is just a linear transformation. Press OK, run the georeferencer, and you can see that actually it now lines up pretty nicely with our map. And that's probably because this was in some sort of a coordinate system which is close to the UTM system. So we could put it on and off to see how good the, the fit is. For example, here, this is a quite a solid building yeah and another thing we can try is just to in symbology sorry um yeah symbology blending mode we just say multiply and say okay and then you can see when you zoom in that the fit is quite nice okay let's have a look check the results. Yes, that's what we've been doing. And um, the results look okay. Maybe what I'll do is I'll um, make the satellite image less important. And maybe even make it gray, so that it kind of fades a bit into the background. And now we could just print this map. So we we'll go to Project, uh, Layout Manager, Salma Dam, and there we go. This is our final map of the general layout plan on top of the black and white satellite image. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this little video and see you on the next one.